Hello everyone, I hope you guys are doing well and having a wonderful day. My name is Emmanuel Okafo and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to shade a kettle. And my goal with this project is mainly to give you a strong understanding of how to create or build up your roughness map inside Blender. But I'm just going to also include just shading the whole kettle as a whole. And what you'll be getting from this is a strong understanding of how to get an image ready for production presentation okay so once you have your object and you've um, unwrapped it um, then you can proceed so I'm going to select this object and switch to the shader editor I'm going to switch this to object okay typically this is what you have you have the principal BSDF and your material output and if we go and enable the material preview we can quickly just cycle through colors different colors and it's working okay so the first thing like I said we want to mainly focus on building a nice roughness map and then adding colors and adding bomb map with all fitting because the the key to getting really high quality image is really the roughness map honestly uh, color map can be you can mix and match different things and it's gonna look well but if you have a strong roughness, roughness map it's just drastically going to improve your final image okay so i'm going to go to google and search for ground textures so i selected this one and i'm gonna have to save it um, it's not perfect but it's gonna work so let's go ahead and test it out in blender i'm going to go to add node texture image texture and i'm going to locate where i saved that so I have that saved on desktop and we can go ahead and preview this. So what we want to watch out for first of all, especially when you downloaded an image from Google, is to check out the seams, um, stuff like this, the tiling. Uh, because if I go ahead and hit Ctrl C, because I'm using the Node Wrangler um, and scale this like three, we can see we start getting stuff like this and this is not desirable. So I'm going to show you a quick way you can fix that, not using Blender, but Photoshop. So here is our image and we already know that our problem is that the image is not tileable. And that is made obvious from the corners. You can see we have light edges here and we have darker edges. So Photoshop gives you a tool that allows you to quickly fix this. So I'm going to uncheck this and go to Filter, Order, and click on Offset. So you can start seeing the tiling problems um, here. So this might be quite tricky to fix, but we'll, we'll do it. So basically you just wanna adjust this to make it roughly aligned um, like this, okay? So once you've done this, then you can use all the Photoshop tools that allows you to um, blend stuff to start fixing this. So you can grab this um, box select. And if you hit shift backspace, content aware feature, and take some time but to try to blend it so that's basically what I'm going to do to blend this image out so I've tried using the content aware feature of Photoshop um, but I've kind of hit a roadblock because it can do more um, than this so the next step is to use this clone stamp tool to kind of uh, fix this so we're using the clone stamp tool increase the size and we can sample holding down alt from one corner and just paint it in okay so i like how it's looking and we can test this out again so applying the offset filter you can see we're not seeing those visible seams so that's one way you can fix it so we can go to other offset and kind of go through the image to make sure that there's no obvious seems so once you're happy with what you want you can go ahead and do some little um, color correction just make the image a bit brighter if you like okay so i'm happy with how how it looks just going to go ahead and save it so here in blender we can update this and see what we have so we've kind of fixed it and i like how it's looking and we can proceed from here Okay, 
So I'm going to put this and just connect it directly to the roughness map. So you're noticing I'm not connecting it to the specularity. Um, usually if, if you have the time, you can have custom specularity map that works. So, so right now it's not so obvious um, and it depends on the kind of grunge map the kind of color information in your grunge map um, so to really play with this you want to go to add um, converter map node okay and then you want to switch it from add to multiply so what you can do here is just adjust the values and you can start seeing it coming through Okay, so if you're happy with this look, uh, let's go extreme case, something like this. If you're happy with how it looks, then you can proceed from here. But if you think some part are extremely um, too shiny or too rough, um, one thing you can do is also go to add converter color ramp. So once you place it here, you can use this to adjust it if you like. And one thing you can also do is once you select any of these handles, you have access to this color. So you can increase this value. So basically when it's white, it's rougher. And when it's dark, it's shinier. So you just do with that whatever you want. So and just tweak this so we have something that looks acceptable. So since we're going for metal stuff, then it, it definitely will look more grungier. Okay, so this is how we have it looking now. I mean, it's, too, it's a bit too much, so, so I'll just slightly. So this is how it looks and it's fine. So since we're going for a metal material, so we want to make this metallic, okay? And then you can reduce the specularity in case you don't want that extra shine, but sometimes it's fine. Um, next is for the color information. So for the color information, I tend to use textures even for like just metals that usually tends to be just white like this. I tend to use like a texture. So I'll just duplicate this and open. I, I'm not going to download this time so I don't have to waste time. I have textures that work so I'm going to go to my metal folder and just search for any metal. So something like this. So this um, is styleable, so that's perfect. So we can plug that. Okay. So I like how it's looking. And if it seems darker, so we can just increase the value to two. By the way, quick tip, if in case you want to just have one mapping node for everything, so we can plug it here. And if you wish to adjust the scale of just this one texture what you can do is to go to vector by the way i'm doing shift a to bring out this menu so you go to vector transform sorry we go for so we go for vector uh, we go for, to converter vector math okay so we just to multiply Okay, and now you can play with this value. So if you set this to point 0.2, so this is it at zero. Oh, sorry, at one. This is it at zero. Then if you set it to a higher value, it um, kind of multiplies. If you set it to a lower value, it um, shrink, uh, makes it bigger, uh, smaller. Sorry. So I'm gonna set this to one. Or maybe two. Okay, uh, one is fine. Oh, probably point six. So we can see. Okay, so you um, in case it's darker, um, you can go to color, hue saturation value. Okay, just let, let it load, and value. You can increase it to make it brighter, stuff like that. Okay, and not you can always go here 
and kind of even things out if it's quite rough. Okay, so for the final um, touch is to add a little bump map to make it not so perfect. So I usually want it to reflect um, the, the information coming from both the color information and the roughness map because any dent tends to have any kind of ground you're seeing or any roughness tends to have like a physical um, distortion even very even though it's very high frequency it tends to have that so we can make that obvious using the bump map so i'm going to create use a, a mix rgb and connect both of them okay so use add just combine the two So it's not going to be so obvious. We just want it as a very subtle bump map information. So add the bump node. This is as height. Set this to a very low value, like 0 0.05. We'll, we'll probably have to increase that later, but want to start very small. So that's too obvious. So 0 0.01. So it needs to be very subtle, but it's definitely influencing the kettle. okay so from here you can just what these three maps are usually the maps you need to consider and from here you can improve on things you can add special map for the metallic um, socket you want special map for the specular socket to give it some nice um, to break it up so basically this is our asset so I hope this tutorial was helpful. I hope you enjoyed enjoyed it. And if you wish to see more from me, please don't forget to subscribe and like this video if you thought it was helpful. So bye 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 for now. See you next time.